When given the question, which Stormlight Archive book is my favorite, I usually say the next one. Always the next one. And this has held true for me. Each book I've liked a little bit more than the last. With Oathbringer being my favorite so far, bringing the series to its highest heights of epicness. But while it is my favorite, I do think that Words of Radiance is the better book, as far as the pacing and the structure. I'd even say it's possibly Sanderson's very best so far, so let's talk about it. To kick off the Year of Cosmere on my channel, in preparation for the upcoming Rhythm of War coming out this November, I have been rereading the Stormlight Archive. And if you want to join in, I have been hosting a Stormlight Archive read-along on my Discord server, where I post my thoughts as well as fan art every single week. We are currently on Words of Radiance, but feel free to join in at whatever part you're at in the books. And there's various other channels to talk about fantasy books, so make sure you join the server. Now, I have made a review for The Way of Kings, I have made an in-depth summary for The Way of Kings, and now I figure it's time to move on to the second book. I will be making a summary for this book as well, but I figure I should start with a spoiler-free review of sorts. I'll only be mentioning the beginning of Words of Radiance, so no spoilers there, but if you haven't read The Way of Kings, I will be talking about spoilers in that book. Let me quickly mention that this is the one series that I'd highly recommend getting the hardcovers for. If you don't, you'll miss out on the beautiful inner cover art and the larger illustration sizes for the rest of the artwork. I don't think I've ever been so excited to find pictures in my books as an adult as I have been for this series, but I feel like they really enhance the experience. I regret getting The Way of Kings in paperback. Something I noticed during my first read through these books, but what has become increasingly more apparent now that I'm rereading them, is just how much Sanderson has structured the creme out of this series, and the progression of each character, arranging each volume around a single character's flashbacks and growth. The Way of Kings walked us through Kaladin's life. We got his flashbacks, we learned what drives him to want to protect those around him, and the failures that haunt him, sending him into a deep chasm of depression. We've grown to know Kaladin, and while his character continues to grow throughout the series, in fact, he gets some incredibly badass moments in this one, this book gives the spotlight to Shallan. This time we get her flashbacks, and as her heartbreaking backstory slowly leaks out on the page like stormlight from battered shard plate, I found myself gaining a large amount of respect and understanding for a character that often seems to get a fairly mixed response in the fanbase. In fact, I've seen people outright hating on Shallan, which I really don't understand. At times she can be childish or naive and often says some pretty lame jokes as humor is one of her coping mechanisms, but despite all of that, or maybe because of it, I found her character to have quite a bit of depth. Her insecurities and conflicted self-image really bleed themselves out in this book. And through all of her flashbacks, we really begin to understand just how broken she really is. As the tension and pressure of her backstory builds up, she's also facing challenges from every direction in the present. It opens with a prologue that's very similar to the first book, taking place six years ago during the day of King Gavilar's assassination, only this time we see it from Yasna's perspective. This change in viewpoint actually gives a lot of new information, and if you're a very perceptive reader, then you may pick up on a conversation that's briefly overheard that holds some important details. The story then hits the ground running, picking up immediately after the events of the Way of Kings, Shallan and Yasna are making their way to the Shattered Plains to investigate their theory about the Voidbringers, while Kaladin and Bridge Four are getting accustomed to their new positions in Dalinar's army. Finally having the individual character arcs overlap and interact with each other was such a joy to read. It feels almost like a reward after having most of the characters being separate from each other in the previous book. I gotta say that going into this, I was the most worried about Dalinar, after he was added to Zeth's hit list at the end of the last book. 
But don't go in expecting as much Dalinar page time as we had in The Way of Kings. If you were hoping for lots of Dalinar point of views, just you wait until Oathbringer. However, Adolin was a character that I was happy to see get more page time and developed a personality beyond that of just the cocky son of Dalinar. I really started to like his character with this book. But Shallan and Kaladin definitely get the higher word count here, and I'm not complaining because their story arc never once got boring for me. I will say that a lot of the tension in Words of Radiance seems to be derived by the characters' unwillingness to speak with each other, and this is a device I'm just not too fond of. Kaladin's trust issues, while understandable, get a little tiresome as we see him often being too paranoid to admit his suspicions to anyone. This isn't a major flaw by any means, lack of communication is used in many books to add tension, but something I thought to be worth mentioning. Now, there is a lot more humor in this book, which I really enjoyed, however, it is that sort of witty banter and bad puns sort of humor that I know isn't for everyone, but I think it is important to keep in mind that since Shallan uses humor as a coping mechanism, more often than not, the jokes are kind of meant to be lame, and that's what makes them funny. But it does seem like the humor is either a love it or hate it thing for a lot of people. If you do want to be as Cosmere aware as possible, you could benefit from reading Warbreaker before this one, or reading it at least before diving into Oathbringer. Now if you thought The Way of Kings had its fair share of intrigue and suspense, Words of Radiance cranks it up a notch, or maybe several. This time around, there's a good dose of espionage and secret society shenanigans involving the Ghostbloods, who we've learned about in the previous book, not to mention a mysterious countdown that appears near the beginning of the book. I won't spoil anything, but things get fairly convoluted in the best of ways. The biggest weakness of the first book was its pacing, with the amount of world building and setting up that was needed for the first book in a planned 10 book series, it's understandable that it was a tad slower. However, I'm happy to say that Words of Radiance improves upon the strong foundation laid down by the Way of Kings, in almost every way bringing us a much quicker pace. Despite being longer than The Way of Kings, I found that it reads much faster, which is always appreciated when it comes to a hefty book like this one. Now I can't mention a Sanderson book without talking about the world building, and Roshar becomes even more vibrant as the world building is fleshed out, and we see more mythology, creatures, and magic explored in more detail. We get a much deeper look at the Parshendi's culture, which I found very fascinating. And of course, the interludes do a great job at expanding our view of Roshar, and this time around, I found them to be much more improved and more plot important. And the plot has raised the stakes much higher, with Shallan bearing the burden to try and somehow prevent the return of the Voidbringers and the oncoming desolation. Now, in my opinion, this is the book where Sanderson really proves himself a master of those epic action scenes. There are so many moments that kept me up reading late into the night because of how adrenaline-filled they were, and I love it. Most enjoyable was the ending, which was one of the most epic things I've read. Once the Sanderson avalanche took over in the last like 150 pages or so, there was just so much going on and it was mind blowing. It's also a very satisfying ending. We're not left with a bunch of unresolved issues. There's still the main plot threads that need to be unwound over time, but most things are wrapped up very nicely. Words of Radiance improves on its predecessor in almost every way. And while the next book, Oathbringer, is my favorite, I do feel like it struggles from some pacing issues, and at times it can feel like there's too many things going on at once. Which is why I feel like Words of Radiance hits that perfect balance. Now, I will be sharing my thoughts on Oathbringer in a different video, and you can also expect to see some summary videos from me before the fourth book comes out. Now, like I said, I'm doing a year of Cosmere on my channel, which means I'm going to dedicate a lot of my videos to Brandon Sanderson's books. This will include everything from summaries, lore, theory videos, and everything else. I'm already working on a few, but if you have any Cosmere things that you'd like to see me make a video on, then let me know in the comments. Whether it's the Stormlight Archive, Mistborn, or any of the other Cosmere books, I do plan on making videos on all of them. 
If you want your name added to the magical scroll, then make sure to check out my Patreon linked in the description. By supporting me on there, you're directly helping the channel and helping me be able to make these videos. I'll be posting a sneak peek of my Words of Radiance summary video on there once I get enough of it finished. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this book and what your favorite Brandon Sanderson book is.